Welcome to worship coming from St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Fleetwood, Pennsylvania for the week of Sunday, June 6, 2021. The second Sunday after Pentecost. The theme of our readings today and of our sermon is focused on the gospel. For in the gospel, Jesus exposes accusations and blaming that so often tear apart individuals, families, and social institutions. And yet at the same time, he demonstrates his incredible power to forgive and restore brokenness and to draw us all into one true family of God. By our announcements today, you will know that we are proceeding steadily towards normal ministry and outreach as well as worship. We have many things going on and we encourage you to get involved in any or all of these opportunities so that our ministry and outreach can be strong. The food pantry, which we were supposed to uh, work at this past Thursday, um, has been rescheduled for this coming Thursday, June 10th, from 3 until 6 p.m. Please come out and join us. Our special monthly offering for the month of June is the Fleetwood Library. The library is expanding. And as many of you know, libraries are a great community resource because they provide free and equal access to resources and to technology for lifelong learning. We are continuing to collect personal care items for Lutheran World Relief. We will collect these through June 20th. You will see the box in the entryway marked LWR, where you can drop off your newly purchased items. There is a flyer in included with today's posted bulletin with all the information you need. Also, we ask your prayers for our students who will be coming together on June 13th to receive First Communion instruction. These children will receive their First Communion on Sunday, June 27th at the 930 service. On June 27th, the 8 a.m. service will be moved into the sanctuary. However, we will continue to broadcast to the parking lot for those who are still concerned about coming inside. Also, on June 27th, we will resume hosting communion at the rail using the elements of the wafer and wine. We also offer the option of people who would prefer to remain in their pew and use the prepackaged communion elements. So please, we hope you will join us indoors, but nevertheless, join us either on the parking lot or through our YouTube or live streaming opportunities. Join me now for the confession and forgiveness. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to God who is faithful and just and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, have mercy on us. We confess to you that we have th sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another in word and deed. In your compassion, forgive our sin and so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. 
With joy I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please share a sign of God's peace. Let us pray. All powerful God, in Jesus Christ, you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from the third chapter of Genesis, verses 8 to 15. Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. 
And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman who you gained to, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all the animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but what it cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that it is the earthly tent we live in is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the third chapter. Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went to restrain him, for people were saying, he is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul. For he is, by the ruler of demons, he is casting out demons. And Jesus called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter the house of a strong man and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then, indeed, they can plunder the house. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. 
But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For the people and the scribes had said that he had an unclean spirit. Then his mother and brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and brothers and sisters are outside calling for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? Then, looking around at those who were with him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Hey kids, welcome back to worship. I want to ask you about something you're all very familiar with, about family. How do you know that you're part of a family? What are the things that family members do that are very special? What can you think of? Hmm. Well, would you agree that we know we're members of a family because people around us are referred to as mom and dad? or in some cases, maybe grandma and granddad. We know we're a family because we have someone who's called our sister or our, or our brother. But what are some other things that families do that probably aren't done in other places? I can think of a couple. Families hug one another. Families take care of each other, especially when we're sick. Families eat meals together. Families, or at least our parents, tuck us into bed at bedtime and help us with our reading of Bible stories and praying of prayers. Families feed us. What else can you think of? Now, of course, some of these things are done in other places. Other people feed us and hug us. But there's something about the way moms and dads and sisters and brothers hug one another. There's something about the way that we stick by each other as family members when one of us is sick. There's something about the way that we feel that we, we belong. We feel at home because we share a house with those special people called our family. Well, you know, there's another family that we also are part of that is similar in many ways to our own families, and that is God's family. For doesn't God feed us? We ask him to. Doesn't God take care of us and help us to get well? And maybe in some ways, when a mom or dad or sister or brother hugs you, it almost feels like God's arms are wrapped around you, helping you to feel safe, to feel at peace, to feel calm. And the thing about God's family is that anybody can be part of it. You are a part of it. I am a part of it. And so is your parents and your brothers and sisters. You can invite friends to be a part of it. You can even invite your enemies to be part of God's family. Jesus, in today's gospel, says, anybody who does what God asks us to do is Jesus' family. 
So family, children, I'm glad to be your brother, your brother in Christ. And I'm glad to have you as my sisters and my brothers. Amen. I recently came across a story about a 16-year-old homeless child who had come to Mary's shelter in Reading. She thanked the staff at the shelter for helping her to feel normal. Now, what this child meant by feeling normal was having a family. Having been alone, maybe gone from foster home to foster home, being at Mary's shelter and being so well cared for and given attention to meet her needs made her feel what she called normal. Having a family, having people who hugged her, who tended to her needs, who stuck by her. In our readings today, especially from Genesis and Mark, the things that divide families and divide communities and even our social institutions like churches, the things that divide them are exposed. Consider the Genesis story about Adam and Eve and how when they after they had taken the fruit from the forbidden tree, God approaches them and says, I told you not to do it. Why did you do it? And then all of a sudden the blame is going every which way, up and down and this way and that way. Adam blames Eve. The woman gave the, the fruit to me. Eve blamed the serpent. Well, he, he told me it was okay. Doesn't that happen so much? Especially in today's world. Everybody's blaming everyone else. It seems nobody wants to take responsibility. And that divides us. In the gospel, the scribes are trying to divide the people, trying to draw them away from Jesus whose message was becoming very attractive to many. They tried to do it by perpetuating a lie, saying, Jesus has a demon. He's out of his mind. He's possessed by Satan. This divides. It scares. It raises doubts in people's minds of something they may thought of as true. But now, because of the messaging they're hearing, especially if it's consistent, they're beginning to drift. It's interesting that in that very time for Israel, that those families who had farmed the land as tenants for generations, were beginning to lose their land as the larger landholders were buying them out. And so the sons and daughters were no longer staying on the family land to develop it and to farm it, but were heading into the crowded cities. Israel's social order was crumbling. When this happens in society, it seems that a gap grows and widens further and further and further, often dividing the rich from the poor, or even as in our times, the rich from the middle class and the poor. But the other thing this story demonstrates is Jesus' power to plunder such divisions, to plunder the blaming, the accusations, the false truths, and to restore the gap, to heal it, to bring it back together. 
Today, in this simple story, as Jesus comes home, it highlights everything about the society around him, including the religious leaders and their institutions. Highlights how divided they were and how they were becoming even more and more divided. And so Jesus demonstrates for them how radical a shift there needs to be if that gap is going to be closed, if the divisions are going to be healed. If you notice, throughout the story, there seem to be insiders and outsiders. Now we all know what that means. We may have an in-group, and if we're not thoughtful, we may go places where others who know us feel that they're on the outside and we're kind of with our inside group. In one congregation I served, there was one family, one big family, that it, during fellowship hours used to block the way for other people to get to the food tables and to have space to talk with one another. They would gather in a large circle, sons and daughters, grandparents, children, aunts and uncles. And they never quite understood when I would tell them, you're making everyone else feel like an outsider like they're not part of your in-group. Now, in a sense, even Jesus does that today because he's sitting inside with the group of people who had been allowed to get in, sitting around him. And the interesting thing is the outsiders are his family, his brothers and sisters, and his mother, Mary. The scribes, too, are on the outside, but that probably doesn't surprise us. But what Jesus exposes is that this inner group is not a closed group. That the God whom he has come to be in the world by taking on human flesh and suffering is a God who includes everyone. That is, as Jesus says, everyone who chooses to do God's will. In our day, we have seen so much unrest and division. It was there all along, but the COVID pandemic really stressed our societies to the limit. And so these things were irritated, were instigated, were exacerbated, and they broke out into protests and counter-protests and violence. Black people who felt that they were being cut short during the pandemic, that their needs were not being heard, protested and loudly proclaimed that their lives matter too, as much as white lives or brown lives, Chinese lives or African lives, American lives. Asians were attacked and are being attacked because they're associated with China as people blame China for the virus. Women who have felt disempowered, who have suffered smaller incomes, bias because they may go on leave for childcare or to deliver a child, have risen up also. And overall, the rich, the middle class, and the poor 
have separated into a gap that has become almost unbelievable. Jesus exposes the gap. He exposes the dynamics of what causes the gap. And he promises with the power of forgiveness, the power of God's grace, that by exposing these things, we can heal these things. We can address these things. We can have hope even when we misunderstand one another when solutions seem doomed, we can continue to persist because through Christ the gap can be closed. The divisions and the blaming can be cast away. We can be healed. We can be family. The young girl that I spoke about in the beginning felt at home because an agency that was staffed with compassionate people could provide what she needed to feel normal, to feel like she was with family. Just last week, as I stood in the cemetery over in Dryville, burying Matt Yorkowicz. I was astounded and deeply encouraged by the family that I saw gathered out there. This wasn't only Matt's family, his blood family, but this was a family of motorcyclists, all who had gotten to know Matt well because he was the guy that kept their motorcycles running. And they all had a passion for their cycles and for motorcycling. This family was so big. They formed this immense circle around the gravesite, so much so that to do the interment, I had to shout so that everybody could hear me. This family what they call their Schaefer family, would shame many a church family. What does a family do? A family hugs one another. They love one another, care for one another, stick by each other. They teach one another. What does God's family do? Well, we include everyone and teach them the ways of Christ so that together with us they can follow Jesus as we do God's work together. In a church family, there should be no insiders or outsiders, for we are all God's family. And we here are beginning to do more and more as we come out of this pandemic as the clouds disperse and as we come out of our hiding places and our homes. We need volunteers at the food bank this very week. We need people to go out and buy personal care items so that we can fill many of these. Our first communion children will be gathering to be taught taught the faith and taught an understanding of Holy Communion and what it means for their lives. Our graduates will be recognized today as we gather around them in prayer and support. And we will be coming back more and more to more of us to worship. To worship together again. Come family. All who follow the ways of Christ, let us come together and do all the things that families do to show and to make all of us feel that we are truly members 
of one great family in Christ. Amen. Let us affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of wholeness, we pray for believers all over the globe. Unify us in service of the gospel that we may work together as beloved siblings to share your love with all. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the cosmos, we pray for creation, the gardens, waterways, and creatures near to us and diverse forms of life that remain unseen. Teach us to treat the natural world with reverence, seeking restoration when human divisions have caused harm to your beloved creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all people, we pray for harmony among the nations. Cast out from us unclean spirits of greed and fear that we may work in solidarity with one another for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of abundance, we pray for those who are oppressed or in any need. Encourage those who have begun to lose heart. Strengthen and renew us with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of righteousness, we pray for this holy house of worship. Set our gaze upon things eternal, that is, that in thanksgiving for your mercy, we may extend grace to more and more people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the ages, in your goodness, you have sent us faithful witnesses for every time and place. We give you thanks for those saints who now rest in your eternal mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Today we recognize our graduates. This year we have two people that we, we do especially want to recognize. Amy Denofa. Amy is the daughter of Ray and Donna Ahrens. She has received her Master of Education in Reading and currently is working as a um, English as a second, second language teacher at the William Allen High School in Allentown. Also, Tyler Manmiller has graduated from Alvernia University with a Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice. And Tyler is already well on his way to developing his career as he is currently working with the Berks County Probation Department. And so please include in your prayers Amy and Tyler as they move on to the next stages of their career development and of their life's vocation. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. 
Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Let us pray like Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. And may Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you today and always. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.